So now I'm continuing from the outside of the cell. So we did the membrane, cytoplasmic membrane and the extra membrane for gram negatives, the cell wall for cell shape. And then you've got a capsule or slime layer on most bacteria. The capsule and slime layer are for two functions. One is protection. So you can imagine if you have, I mean, it, it's called slime because it's slimy. It's um, very icky. Uh, you can imagine some molecules can't go through the slime. And so that's a layer of protection. It's protection against a number of different chemicals. In addition, it can be used for movement. There are some bacteria that slide along surfaces, and they can only do that if they produce this slime layer to be able to move. There's even one bacteria that works like a jet pack. It shoots slime out the back side of it and shoots itself forward. The other type of structure is called pili or pillars. Pili are also used for a number of different functions, including movement, attachment, and infection. So pili are short, relatively short appendages that come off the cell. Uh, they can be very stiff, just straight lines coming off or kind of wavy and flexible. And they can be used for movement. Some pili, they, they shoot out a pillus grab a surface, and then pull the cell forward. It can be used to attach to cells in your body, for example. E. coli uses pili to attach to the urinary tract or the bladder to hold on so that it can cause an infection. Uh, it's also used for gene transfer that we'll hear about next week. And then lastly, we have flagella. Flagella is a classic way that bacteria move. They're extremely long. I can't show them here because it's off the slide. And as you just said, they spin around so that the bacteria can swim through liquid. And so they can swim quite well and quite quickly with a flagella. And again, there are different types of flagella. So... Uh, now I've talked about everything on, starting from the outside. Now I want to talk a little about the inside. You've got the inside, everything in the inside is called the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is not just a bowl full of water or whatever. It's more like a gel inside there. And the cytoplasm includes all the proteins, everything that's inside the cell. You also have DNA, shown here. DNA, uh, in the case of bacteria, is not in a nucleus. Bacteria are prokaryotes, meaning that the DNA is not enclosed by a membrane. In your cells and in plant cells, you've got another membrane surrounding the DNA. This is not true in bacteria. Uh, cells with a nucleus are called eukaryotes, and we're not going to talk much about them. It's up to people. Uh, but these are prokaryotes. Now I'm going to give you a 30-second explanation of DNA, and I will have extra links if you don't already know this. So DNA is the blueprint for the cell. It's organized in genes, and here is DNA. Genes are transcribed into RNA. RNA is a single-stranded copy of the genes that need to be expressed. So your DNA in all your cells is identical, but in, for example, your liver cells, some genes are expressed for liver functions, and in your eyeball, there are different genes expressed. The DNA is all the same, but the RNA will be different. RNA then goes to the ribosome, where it brings the instructions to make proteins. And proteins function both as structural components and also as enzymes in the cell.
I'll show one more picture of this. So this here is the DNA, the DNA strand. You have an enzyme called RNA polymerase, which binds to the DNA and transcribes a messenger RNA for a specific gene, which then goes to a complex called the ribosome, which uh, translates the RNA into amino acids, which then become proteins. All right? And I realize I did that really fast if you don't know this, but I, there are other links, and we're going to go into more details about this later. So in my little picture here, all these little dots that I've indicated are ribosomes. And I did that because most cells have, or most bacteria, have thousands of ribosomes in them, tens of thousands. And so the whole cell is really full of ribosomes, which allow it to make protein. The last thing on here is this little blue circle where I've indicated a plasmid. Plasmid is also DNA, but it's extra DNA. It is not part of the normal chromosome. It's an extra piece of DNA, which in our case, in this course, become really important because they often carry antibiotic resistance genes. They're usually not required for the cell to have. They can move around between cells. So they're extra DNA. So, in summary, overall, the basic structures of a bacteria are the membrane and cell wall, the DNA, and the proteins that do the work of the cell, as well as play a structural role. In the next section, we're going to discuss how cells grow and divide.